Good morning. All right, it's a raucous group today. We are so excited to baptize baby Jane today. She's here in all her glory with mom and dad and brother and sister and family. And uh, it's World Communion Sunday. Everyone is invited to participate in um, communion and Rob is staffing the nursery today, so we've, we put the communion at the front end before the kids go down so the kids can be here for, I mean, baptism at the front end, so the kids can be here for that. And then uh, we have them come back up for communion, so it'll be a shorter amount of time this morning down in church school, but that's fine. It's great to have the choir back. I know you've been back for a while. I have not. And I have been gone for a long time, and I'm feeling very rusty today. So if I make some mistakes, uh, please forgive me, and we'll go from there. Are there announcements? Andrea? Oh, nothing? You have nothing to report? Well, just what's going on in life. I have some announcements. Oh, we got to ring the bell. Can you do it? Go do it. You, you just go ahead and do it. Ring it. R ring it robustly. He doesn't need to ask. Just let him go do it. No, no. We got to start at the beginning. It used to be that they rang the bell about 20 minutes before the service started. So the farmers coming in from the fields in the wagons like school, I'm sure, knew that they had to get here in time, like give a, give a giddy up to the horses. So we want to ring it right, right around 10, and we don't have to be perfect about it, but he, I don't think he, is he pulling it? Is it, you, you didn't do it. No, I didn't hear it. Go, go, back, go back with Cameron and Rob and let him show you. You really got to get it going. It'll pick him right up off the ground if he holds it. Yeah, there we go, yeah. Yes, fun stuff. I could hear it this morning all the way out of the Good. Was somebody ringing it this morning? Oh. If you can't hear it, you're not ringing it. That's a self-evident truth. You got, but you got to, we really like to ring it loud. I'd like to wake the neighbors up. I got, like, there's one neighbor, I live right here, 
There's one neighbor that I live near that I'd really like to annoy every Sunday. So if we could just get that bell ringing, that would be, that would be terrific. Uh, so a couple other things. We were also going to baptize Lincoln and Audrey today. But unfortunately, I ended up, Katie ended up in the ER. I took her on Thursday with what turned out to be a ruptured disc. So she ended up down in Albany this weekend getting an MRI to determine that that is the case. So she obviously is not here today and is in a lot of pain. So we're praying for her and we'll baptize those two kids at a later date. We'll just spread out the joy a little. And then I know everyone is waiting with bated breath to hear about Sean and Kristen Booten, uh, Mackay Booten, who uh, have not had the baby yet. So they are, they went to the hospital on Thursday to induce and the baby just didn't want to come. It just wasn't time, wasn't ready. So I think they sent her home for a little while and I think they're now back in the hospital at CPH. I'm not sure though whether she, whether that process has started, so prayers for them as we await expectantly the arrival of their child. So it's a happy time in the life of the church. And Rich Grayson painted the railing outside the church, if you saw that, so that was a lot of, yay, Rich, yay. <laughs> Barry gave me the job. I said I'd do it, and I didn't get it done, so Rich had to step up, so that's great. Are there any other announcements? Thrilled you're here, thrilled to be back. Thanks to Andrea for helping this morning set up with baptism. Let's join together and worship the Lord. Please stand and join with me in the responsive call to worship. Let us view God's purpose for us as a sacred trust. Our charge is to nurture and keep alive this foundation. Let us pray. Almighty God, we give you thanks for this glorious fall morning, and we ask that you be with us as we gather together in your name to offer our worship, our love, adoration, and discipleship. We look expectantly to the miracles as you are enacting in our lives together, and let them begin this day. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Our first hymn is in the purple hymnal, number 336. We gather together. Give me a second.
us free. As we remain standing, I would invite you to the hard work of the faith, joining together as one in unison in the prayer of confession in the bulletin. Let us pray. Dear God, when struggle, discouragement, or lack of courage causes our spirits to sag, refresh us with your spirit, where we begin to lose our way, rekindle our sense of the treasure you have given us. Be with us as the meaning of our lives continues to unfold through your Holy Spirit. Amen. Hear the good news, the mercy of God is from everlasting to everlasting. I declare to us in the name of Christ that our sins are forgiven. May the God of mercy who forgives us all our transgressions, strengthens us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Well, uh, affirm our faith reading the Apostles' Creed, and it, it is the inside cover of any hymnal. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, it is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. God is forgiving us in Christ. Let us be forgiving of each other and ourselves. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Please be seated. The scripture reading today is from 2 Timothy 1 to 10 and verse 14. Hear the word of the Lord. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, for the sake of the promise of life that is in Christ Jesus. To Timothy, my beloved child, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I am grateful to God, whom I worship with a clear conscience, as my ancestors did when I remember you constantly in my prayers night and day. Recalling your tears, I long to see you, so that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that lived first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and now, I'm sure, lives in you. For this reason, I remind you to rekindle the gift of God that is within you through the laying on of hands, for God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather a spirit of power and of love and of self-discipline. Do not be ashamed, then, of the testimony about our Lord or of me, his prisoner, but join me in suffering for the gospel, relying on the power of God who saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to God's own purpose and grace. This grace was given to us in Christ Jesus before the ages began, but it has now been revealed through the appearing of our Savior Christ Jesus, who abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Guard the good treasure entrusted to you with the help of the Holy Spirit living in us. Here ends the reading of the word. I'm very excited about this. 
Hear the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach them to observe all that I have commanded, and behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Obeying the words of Christ and sure of God's presence with us, we baptize those who have been called to be God's own. In baptism, God claims us and seals us to show that we belong to God. God frees us from sin and from death, uniting us with Jesus Christ in his death and in his resurrection. By the water of the Holy Spirit, we are made members of the church, the body of Christ, and joined to Christ's ministry of love, peace, and justice. Let us remember with joy our own baptism as we celebrate this sacrament. At this time, I would ask uh, Beth, uh, Pat Mace to come forward and to bring um, Jane and her parents. And anyone else who wants to come? I have mom and baby and dad. And come on up, come on up. Do you have a camera? Come on up, come on up. Come on up. It's great to see you. Stand right here. Let me get you the microphone. On behalf of the session, we present Jane May Eller to receive the sacrament of baptism. Anna and James, putting your whole trust in the grace and love of Christ Jesus, do you desire to have your child baptized? Will you be responsible for nurturing this child in the faith and life of the Christian community? Do you promise to support this child in her individual faith journey as she seeks to discover her unique status as a child of God? Catherine and Gregory, do you promise through prayer and example to support and encourage Jane May to be a faithful Christian and member of the body of Christ? Congregation, please stand. And I would uh, address this to the folks on the stream at home and uh, ask you to respond verbally, out loud, to this question. Do you, the members and friends of the First Presbyterian Church of Canton, Promise to nurture Jane May in her faith journey. And do you pledge your love and support to her just as God loves and supports you? Let us pray. We give you thanks, eternal God, for your nourish and sustain all living things by the gift of water. We thank you for the water of baptism. In it we are buried with Christ in his death, and from it we are raised to share in Christ's resurrection, and through it we are reborn by the power of the Holy Spirit. This is your part. Send your spirit to move over this water, that it may be a fountain of deliverance and rebirth. Wash away the sins of all who are cleansed by it. Raise them to new life and graft them to the body of Christ. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon them, that they may have power to do your will, and continue forever in the risen life of Christ, to whom with God and the Holy Spirit be all glory and honor now and forevermore. Say amen. Amen. It's great to have some help.
Jane May, I baptize you in the name of the Father. Blessings of God Almighty, Creator, oh. and Sustainer, descend upon you now and dwell in your heart forever. Amen. This child of God is now received into the Holy Catholic Church. See what love that God has for us that we would be called the children of God, and we are. We're going to sing the first verse of Blessed Be the Tie That Binds. I'm going to walk around and let you meet this little bugger. Woo! Perfect baby. You say hello? Let's give her a hand and mom and dad. Woo! Thank you, Walter and Alina. Oh, baby, what a beautiful family. Got her hiked up a little bit there. Sorry about that. And we'll have them all sit down. It's, uh, it's so much fun to see the journey and to remember it along the way. And Anna and James have certainly been on a journey at a fast clip the past few years. And so this is terrific. This is a baptismal certificate that you two can sign and give that to them as witnesses. And a bit of a miracle to have everyone here. And I'll sit down and let the choir do your thing.
Thank you. I, I am rusty. I should have dismissed the kids to church school after the baptism. Why don't you take them down if they like to go? And we're going to have them come back up for communion. I'll preach longer, Andrea. Don't worry. I'll give you plenty, give you as much time as I can down there with those kids. Today is a big day at our church. Big day. We have baptized Jane and welcomed her into both the body of Christ and also to this family of faith, which is the church on the park. Now, there is no greater privilege for a pastor than to baptize a child. And this will ever be a part of my life and my memory to baptize this baby and to be uh, here at this juncture and to be a part of all that the two of you have been doing together. Because it's remarkable, right? Think about it. Yes. Now, the sacrament of baptism, like the sacrament of the Lord's Supper, which we'll celebrate in just a bit, is a sign and a seal of what God has already accomplished in Christ. But it is also a sign and a seal of what we as a congregation are promising to accomplish in the life of this child and this family. To be clear, though, this is not something that I, as the pastor, have done just because I did the actual right. This is something that we, as a church, both in person and virtually, will be doing for a very long time to come, though we will be amazed at how quickly the time will pass and how much fun we will have as we go. Now this, for you don't, those of you that don't know, I live right next door. For this uh, past Monday afternoon, I was walking from my house to the church and I saw down at the end of the block the school bus stop and drop off Cameron and Aubrey who just left, she had the pigtails, off in front of their house. And I started to chuckle when I saw Aubrey come bounding off the bus and start flapping her arms and hopping around. Just a kid being happy and having fun, just a kid being a kid, and it made me smile. It was a very sweet moment that soon found a balance with bitterness as I realized in that same instance that someday that bounce would probably be gone from her step. Though knowing Aubrey, that may not be the case. <laughs> as time passes and as we grow older, life becomes more complicated, more convoluted, and inevitably much more difficult. Things cease to be so cut and dried. We discover that most of life is lived in the gray areas rather than the black or the white. We aren't quite so sure of all the answers which once came so readily to us. Now, while this is certainly true, it is equally true that as we grow older, life becomes simpler, though not necessarily easier, as I'm sure Anna and James and every parent can attest, and certainly as Kristen and Sean are now discovering. Whereas we once did all this other stuff, once you have a kid, all you're really doing is this. And the this is the raising the, of the child, and it stretches on for a very, very long time indeed. I can't believe I still have to be a parent. And my, my oldest is almost 30, and I'm still being a parent. But you know how the saying goes, time flies when you're having fun. This past week, I was working on the photo pages 
of the kids on their first day of school for the October newsletter. And if we didn't get any from anybody, please send them in because we've got plenty of room to post. And I, I actually printed some photos off on the bulletin board in the foyer. They're a lot of fun to look at. I was struck, though, when I saw them, of the truth of both parts of that statement. Every single kid in those photos has a big smile on their face. Well, not so much Cameron, but he's a teenager, and he's to be forgiven for that. I also realized that it seems like just yesterday that we were baptizing these kids just as we have baptized Jane here this morning. Of course, coming back to work after three weeks away toiling on Linda's she shack, wasn't all fun and games. We had a session meeting uh, Monday night where we talked about any number of mundane things. There was a backlog of bills that needed to get sent for payment. I had to train Lynn Hunter Beach. She's our new church secretary. Actually, we're going to try to shift the, the title to office coordinator. Can you work with me on that? Yes, I think so too. All right, woo! All right. And the spelling of her last name, which I've never seen done before, is Hunter Beach. No space. Capital H, capital B. Lynn Hunter Beach. And she's a peach, so please get to meet her and say hello. There were a slew of emails, all kinds of crazy things, and messages to return. I sent a note to, to James back there because he got up in the steeple and affected a temporary fix to the leak in the steeple ahead of that rain, so thanks to him. Woo! Yeah. He had nothing else to do this week. I kept walking through the molasses of trying to do a final push on getting the fountain and the park project wrapped up. Ha! Then the furnace at the manse stopped working downstairs, so we were wearing hat and gloves for dinner. You know how hard it is to twirl spaghetti on a, on a fork with gloves on? It's fixed now. And I also had to have some very difficult pastoral conversations with folks going through sickness and heartache and loss. You know, regular life stuff, just like each of you face each and every day which is why it's such a privilege to have a day such as this day, a big day, as I said at the start of the sermon, a day that reminds us of what matters most in life, that we are God's children, that we are beloved, and that all of us have been entrusted with a good treasure we must be vigilant in guarding. Essentially, that is what the Apostle Paul is saying in today's scripture reading from the first chapter of 2 Timothy, written by Paul during his second, which would be final, imprisonment in Rome, and shortly before his death. 2 Timothy is a tender and deeply personal final letter to a close friend and co-worker. Paul encourages Timothy to continue in faithfulness and offers a bold, clear call to continue in the gospel in spite of suffering. Now, at the heart of the letter is the relationship which has grown over time and through both adversity and joy found itself rooted in faith in God. Now, while I certainly hope this won't be my last sermon I deliver here from this pulpit, after so many years together, I can tell you I feel every bit as tender and deeply about all of you as Paul felt about Timothy. I think for a great many people, the whole notion of what it means to be a church gets complicated and bogged down with all the so-called other stuff. The administration, the finances, the doctrine, the social tensions, the fixing of the leaky steeple roof, and the inevitable bureaucracy inherent in any ecclesiastical body. On a day such as this one, however, when we have baptized Jane and await word of the birth of baby Booten, we are reminded that what we need to focus on most 
isn't all of that, but rather on all of this. These kids in our midst. In today's reading, Paul encourages Timothy to rekindle the gift of God that is within us. What I would tell you on such a big day as this is that these children of our church are the gift of God within us. They are also the means by which that same gift of God is rekindled within us old or older folks. While kids aren't the only means to that end, they certainly are the most direct and absolutely the most delightful. They are also an awful lot of work, however, not just for their parents, but for their church as well. The most important part of that job, my mom used to say, having kids is the hardest job you'll ever love. The most important part of that job of raising kids for us as a congregation what is absolutely critical is to make sure that these kids know that they are beloved by us, their church, just as Timothy was beloved by Paul. Now, through the sacrament of baptism, we demonstrate such a love, a love that God first had for us and that now we have for them. However, baptism is merely the first step in a very long journey consisting of thousands of steps that we together must make with these kids and their family. Steps which are taken slowly over the years. At first, the ground we will travel will be smooth and flat as these kids are little and cute and adorable. When they're all full of bounce and bright with light as they hop off the bus. As time passes, however, the path will become rocky and steep as life for them becomes more complicated, more convoluted, and inevitably much more difficult. Regardless of the terrain, however, we need to just keep walking with them and their parents. We must join in celebrating their triumphs and help them back up when they stumble. One thing I know about this congregation, and with absolute certainty, is this. There is a lot of love in here. Let us share it with these kids and with one another, for we are each other's good treasure, which we will guard with a fierce tenderness each and every day of our lives together. And the people were heard to say, Amen. Amen. I'd like to say hi to everyone on the stream out there. I know there's a little bit of a delay, so I'll talk about some other things while we're doing that. Ellen is going to walk around with the microphone turned on. Have you anything you'd like to add? Uh, clearly, we're play, uh, praying for Sean and Kristen. We're praying for Katie Gollinger and her back. We're praying for Anna and James and Jane and their family. It's great to have you. How far did you come from their godparent sponsors? Where did you travel from? Where in Pennsylvania? Lancaster. Lancaster. Now, I'm from Lancaster, New York. But if you're from Lancaster, Pennsylvania, you say it a different way. Well, thank you for making the trip up. That's great. Wonderful. Now, we haven't had a baptism in a little while for a number of reasons mostly COVID, but we decided, because Linda and I couldn't really remember, that if we ever had a tradition of the church of getting a cake for baptism, and I think we did, we have one now. So there are actually two cakes up there, half sheet cakes, and each family got to pick what kind of cake they wanted, and it, it says congratulations uh, to Jane and welcome to Jane and uh, we're not going to freeze the one for Lincoln and Aubrey. We're going we're gonna to eat it. But the good news is that whatever cake is left, that family gets to take home and they can eat that. Now, as I recall, the Ellers made a very excellent choice in their cake. What, what kind did they pick? 
Carrot cake with cream, cream cheese. Excellent. Thank you very much. Just now, but just to give you a little bit of a contrast, now, what did the Gollingers pick? Triple chocolate fudge with buttercream. Now, I, I, you might have to have a piece of both. I don't know. So there's, oh, there, look at that. There was James with the baby there. You just missed him. All right. He's spinning around. Uh, we resume the Partridge Knoll service this week. We do that in the winter months over at Partridge Knoll. That's at 11 o'clock on Tuesday, right? Wednesday. Wednesday, that's wrong. Who proofed this bulletin? The day was right, not the, not the date. The date was right. Bob will be playing, and the, the public is welcome, but I think they've had an incidence of COVID there, so they're asking outsiders to wear masks, so we'll do that. Thank you, Helen. I'm stretching. I'm giving Andrea some time. And uh, choir practice is, again, on Thursdays. And today we're receiving the deacons and the food offering, so as well as the offering. And we're going to reinstitute the actual passing of the offering plates next month, but we needed to get a few, I needed to get a few things under my belt this month. Um, but please remember the deacons and food offering. And they just helped out this past week with some things, so I appreciate that. And communion today. But next week, Sunday, we're having a blessing of the children. So in the same way that I anointed Jane today, we're going to anoint each of the kids. We do this at the start of the school year every year. And so hopefully the kids can come and receive that either on their forehead or if they feel more comfortable on their, their hand, we can do that as well. So that's an exciting day for me. It's Patience Birthday today. Let, let's sing Happy Birthday. Happy Birthday to you. Happy Birthday to you. Birthday, dear patient. Happy birthday to you. Thank you. And Tiffany has her birthday this week, and Diane last. And Diane, I don't know if you know this about Diane. Diane finally retired after doing about three jobs for 30 years for the Colton Pierpont School District. And her partner, significant other, said that for her birthday when she retired that he would take her to Hawaii and so she went to Hawaii and she actually butt dialed me on the way home from the airport so I got she said it was a fabulous time and so that's wonderful happy birthday to her and Steve and Martha have a you forgot well, that's why we do it for people and Bill and Katie also have an anniversary uh, on Saturday as well so we're also asking healing for Bob and for Jeff and for Jean and comfort for Sarah and Jody in particular. Yes, are there any other things? Yes, I'd just like to ask for prayers for my granddaughter, Abby Mace. She's in Fort Myers in the hospital, and it was, when I heard from my son, it was the only hospital open because the others were all flooded. So I've tried to get more information, but my son hasn't called me back, and I don't want to bother her because she works nights as a rule, but I'm not sure how many hours she's working now, but, uh, and all the people she's trying to take care of. She works at the hospital? Yes, she's an um, x-ray technician. Okay. So she's not a patient there, which is better. And obviously praying for everybody who's been affected by Hurricane Ian, yes. I'd like to ask for prayer for a, a woman named Maureen. She's a friend of Gordy's family. She was very helpful to us when his daughter Emily passed away. And she's in the hospital at CPH with a uh, stomach bacteria that they don't know what it is. And she went sepsis, and they don't know, I guess, if she's going to make it or not. So we need to pray for Maureen that they find out what that stomach bacteria is. All right. Anything else? Did you, did you recap the rummage sale and everything last Sunday? So we don't need to go into that again. But it was no. wonderful. No. It was wonderful. <laughs> we need more helpers. Well, and I, and I realize that it's not, the world's not going to end if the whole thing doesn't get cleaned up on a Saturday, that we can finish it up on a Sunday. But I know that rubs 
Ellen the wrong way. So, yes. I do not watch the live stream when I'm not here. And and for and and so I don't have to answer a million questions. The she shack is not done. It won't be done for quite some time. But the sheetrock is hung. It's primed. It's painted. Half the oak and the cherry is trimmed out and dimensioned, and the fans are up and the lights are up and it, progress is being made. But slow and steady wins the race. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for this church family and we welcome Jane into our midst. We celebrate her life and all the wonders and joy she will experience and we commit ourselves to James and Anna and her family that we would be there to support them just as we are here to support each person. We pray today for Katie Gollinger and her back. We pray healing. We ask that you be with Sean and Christian as they are laboring to labor. And we ask that you bring that bundle of joy into this world safely and with health and vigor. We pray for Karen and Bill Parker who were reunited this week following Bill's surgery. We pray for Mark and Nancy Brown grieving mightily from the unexpected death of their oldest son. We pray for the Boswell family. We celebrate Patient's birthday today. We ask that you be with Colleen Grant and she faces health issues. Be with Mitzi, a friend of Beth's. We pray for the Bassford and Rohde families. We pray for Crystal Lyon, who has been ailing and facing health challenges. Be with Nick Scalzi, who is aging and feeling a little low, but doing okay. Prayers for our own Andrea Montgomery, teaching our kids right now as she is healing from surgery. We pray for Rhonda Walsh, who has a, a bad foot and is being treated for that. Particular prayers for Jody Upton as she faces a difficult challenge with cancer. We pray for all those who are ill in hospitals or nursing homes. We pray those for those serving our nation and their families in support of them. We pray for those who have been affected so mightily by Ian and the hurricane and the wind and the rain and the surge. We pray for Pat's granddaughter, Abby, who is serving so many in the hospital down there. We pray for Maureen uh, with a stomach infection, and we ask that you give wisdom to those treating her. We ask that you be with our church. We celebrate choirs coming back and be with them, and we are thankful to them for the time and effort that they make. We are grateful for loving friends that would travel so far to be here on such a special day for Jane. And we ask that you bless us in our time together. And we pray these things in the name of the one who taught us, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Praise God from whom, please stand, saints flow. Praise God all creatures here below. Praise God above the heavenly host, Creator Christ and Holy Ghost. Amen. Hey, what? Great. Why don't you get a family a family photo of uh, James and Anna and the kids today? Do that for sure. Uh, and I want to say I just got it and get one of Dennis um, and I just got a text from Sean they are at Canton Potsdam Hospital no news beyond that uh, but if you have your camera if you have your camera just realized uh, so would somebody go get the kids yes thanks just have them come on up the thundering mass Give us one second here. Our communion hymn is uh, 525, Let Us Break Bread Together. Everyone is invited to share in communion.
Glad you made it back, Andrea. Sometimes kids go down to church school, they never come back. No, that's not true. You're back, you're back. <laughs> My friends, this is the feast of the people of God, and men and women will come from north and south and east and west to sit at table in the kingdom of God, for this is the Lord's table. And our Savior invites all those who believe to come and to share in the gifts which have been prepared, the gifts of God for the people. Let us now reverently attend to the words of institution of the Holy Supper of our Lord Jesus Christ as they are delivered by the Apostle Paul. I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take and eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink of this cup, you do show the Lord's death until he comes. Let us pray. Almighty God, we give you thanks today for the opportunity to dwell together in fellowship to bask in the glow of salvation, in the promise of hope that you give, the gift of eternal life through your Son on the cross. We remember and celebrate that great act of love and how it continues to transform this world in our lives. We ask that you be with each person here, those that are sitting in the pews and those who are at home in their kitchen or living room. We pray that you fill us with a sense of purpose, and a sense of union, and a sense of joy, that we may feel as palpable the connection that we have, not only to you, but to each other, through this church. Today we lift up each person here, in their own journey, in their own struggles, and joys, and triumphs. We ask that you fill us with your peace, in Christ's name we pray, amen. On a night long ago, on a day just like this day, a big day, Jesus gathered with his family and friends as we gather here. And on that night, he took bread. And after he had given thanks, he broke it. And he broke it. <laughs> and he gave it to his disciples, as I, ministering in his name, give it unto you. And he said, take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance. Thank you. 
in remembrance of him. Now when supper had ended, Jesus also took the cup. And after he had given thanks, he poured it out. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for the forgiveness of all. Take ye and drink of it in remembrance of me. in remembrance and celebration of him. Let us pray. Almighty God, we give you thanks for the treasure of these children in our midst. Allow them to help us to remember that we are your children. And just as we see the wonder and the joy in their lives and their eyes and their hearts and their hopes that you see such things in us as well, even still. We thank you for the love that surrounds us and binds us, holds us together as one. We ask that we might be, as a church, an instrument of your mercy and grace and peace and power in this world. And it is in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Our final hymn is Ellen Grayson's favorite. Number 340 in the purple hymnal, this is my song.
go from this place today filled with peace and hope. Remember the treasure that is within you, as beautiful as Jane has presented to us today. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine on you, be gracious to you, and give you peace. Amen. Please be seated for the anthem. Benediction. Have a great week, everybody. Come have some cake. Thank you.